Good morning, and welcome to St. John the Baptist Cathedral Parish. We welcome all of you present and those joining us through live stream. From September the 1st to October the 4th is set aside each year in our church as a season of creation. Today is the annual World Day of Prayer for the Care of the Creation, and Pope Francis says, it offers to individual believers and to the community a precious opportunity to renew our personal participation in this vocation as custodians of creation, raising to God our thanks for the marvelous works that God has entrusted to our care, invoking God's help for the protection of creation and God's mercy for the sins committed against the world in which we live. Thank you for your presence here at our Mass, and we welcome all of you. Please be generous in contributing financially to our parish, as we depend on your generosity to keep this parish operating. There are collection boxes and tap machines available for you in the church. At this time, I ask that you please silence your phones. Our presider for today's Mass is Archbishop Peter Hunt, and our entrance chant is For the Beauty of the Earth, 531 in the Catholic Book of Worship. Please stand. we pause to call to mind God's goodness and to ask forgiveness for our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. 
You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Now Israel, give heed to the statutes and ordinances that I am teaching you to observe, so that you may live to enter and occupy the land that the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. You must neither add anything to what I command you, nor take away anything from it, but keep the commandments of the Lord your God with which I am charging you. You must observe diligently, for this will show your wisdom and discernment to the peoples, who, when they hear all these statutes, will say, Surely this great nation is a wise and discerning people. For what other great nation has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is whenever we call to him? And what other great nation has statutes and ordinances as just as this entire law that I am setting before you today. The word of the Lord.
The response to Psalm 15 can be found at number 93 in the white pamphlet in your pew. The response is, O Lord, who may abide in your tent? A reading from the letter of St. James. Every generous act of giving, with every perfect gift, is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress, to keep oneself unstained by the world. The word of the Lord.
that we would become first fruits of his creation. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? Jesus said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites. As it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then Jesus called the crowd again and said to them, listen to me all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile them, but the things that come out of a person are what defile them. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. The Gospel of the Lord. I don't want any of the young members of our congregation to get the idea that today's gospel set means you don't need to wash your hands before you eat. You definitely should do that. In uh, the Living Faith this week, reflecting on the gospel, the commentator says, in today's gospel, Jesus challenges his heroes, hear, his hearers to get to the heart of the matter. Nothing that goes into a body can make it unclean or defile it. It's what comes out of us that can cause trouble, tear down, or build up. The choice is ours. We can choose to utter words of comfort and healing, or we can choose to pass on gossip and words that wound. We can choose to do good, and we can choose to do harm. We can choose to be people of truth, or to be people who lie and deceive. We can choose to build human community, or we can sow division. The choice is ours to make. And we don't just choose good once and for all. We must choose it every day in a thousand small ways. The small decisions for good and for God add up to the large decisions. In our second reading today, James, in his letter, talks about the fact that we're to be doers of the word and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. And I think in a real way, our readings this weekend invite us to, um, to, to put our money where our mouth is in terms of how we live. And certainly we know from experience, sadly from experience in this diocese, that when our words don't match our actions, It creates scandal and it ruins our credibility. The challenge for us as followers of Christ is to be people that do what we're called to do and do it with integrity day by day in small things as well as in great. This weekend we celebrate the World Day of Prayer for the Care of Creation and we celebrate Labor Day. 
And it's not a bad thing that we're celebrating both at the same time. In our work, as well as in our homes, we're called, especially in our time and age, to be people who are sensitive to our, our cre the creation around us and to our environment and of the need we have to not only seek to be environmentally friendly, but to try to in some way make up for the environmental uh, evils that we've done in the past, the things that uh, are ruining our world in which we need to correct. The challenge for us in our living, maybe more so in our home than in our places of work, is to be people that are sensitive to the fact that our small decisions globally make a big difference and that we are challenged if we are truly to work with the Lord uh, to be people that do what we can to improve our environment and to make it as clean and as healthy as possible. There's a story told about two men who were working on a building site. They were building a, a church, a, a, mar a large modern church, and uh, they were just uh, laborers. They were bricklayers. But the two of them, when questioned about what they did, had very different answers. The first guy, when he was asked what he did, he said, well, I lay bricks. You know, I take cement and I put it down, I put the bricks in it. The other guy, when he was asked what he did, he smiled and he spread out his hands at the site and he said, I'm building a church. He was very much seeing the big picture rather than just simply what he was doing. He was seeing what he was doing within the context of the whole work that was being done. Labor Day is a time that invites us to recognize that God has called us through our labor to be creative with him. He is the creator of the world, but he invites us as human beings to join with him in creating. We do that by the way we build up uh, the world, the way we build up one another, by the way we do our work in a joyful and loving way. As we continue in our Mass today on this Labor Day weekend, it is a time for us to thank the Lord for the work we do and to uh, pray for those who are not so fortunate, to pray that they too may have work to do, and to pray that all of us may recognize that our labor is a call for us to be creative, to join in the creative work of God. It's also a time for us to pray that through our work and through the way we live, we may do our part to take care of the Lord's creation, to build it up, to keep it safe, to make it a place that is environmentally good for the next generations who come after us. God bless you. Let us stand and together profess our faith in a God of goodness and love, using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Jesus has assured us that wherever two or more are gathered in his name, he is present in their midst. Confident of God's presence here among us, we offer to him now our prayers and petition. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and our Archbishop Peter, and all of God's people, the Church, that all, may, all of us may bring Christ's love to everyone hungry for Jesus, the bread of life. We pray to the Lord. 
We pray on this Labor Day weekend for meaningful work for all people and for safe and equitable work environments. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray in this season of creation that the world may overcome the selfishness, greed, neglect, and abuse that have caused the climate crisis, the loss of biodiversity, and the resulting human suffering, so that a spirit of hope and justice will live in the hearts of all people, and all may respect and care for the earth, our common home. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For teachers and students who begin a new school year, that God may bless them with success. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We pray that we may realize that Christ's presence in the Eucharist is a daily call for us to share Jesus with the poor, the homeless, refugees, and the hungry. We pray to the Lord. We pray for peace in all areas of conflict in our world, especially Israel and Gaza and Ukraine. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for all of the sick and for all wounded in body, mind, and spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for all our loved ones who have died, for the recently deceased Harold and Barbara Mason, Paul Taylor, and we pray for Debbie Boland, Louise Foley, deceased of the Oratorians and Missionaries of Charity, that they may rest in the peace of the risen Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pause for a moment to bow our heads and offer our own personal intentions. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear the prayers that we offer you this morning, both those we have spoken aloud and those that are in our hearts, <clears throat> for they are offered through Christ our Lord. Our offertory hymn is You Are Near, 487 in the Catholic Book of Worship. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his holy church. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, 
that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners, and he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, 
and grant that, by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your Church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis our Pope and me, your unworthy servant, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. They are in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. John the Baptist, and with all the saints. We shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. baptism we have become God's children and so with confidence we can pray our, our Father, Father who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name, name. thy and kingdom come, come thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not to temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us Lord we pray from every evil Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of the Lord's peace.
Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy that, that you should enter, enter under my roof, but, but only I'll say the word, word, and my soul shall be healed. For the reception of Holy Communion, we encourage you to sanitize your hands before receiving Holy Communion. If you are unable to receive Holy Communion, you are welcome to come forward for a blessing. Our communion hymn is Our Daily Bread, number 600 in the Catholic Book of Worship. Sinfulness, 
and rise us up to new life. Father, merciful and gracious, give us now our daily Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that, being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you and our neighbor 
through Christ our Lord. shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with kindness and give you his peace. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Our missioning hymn is 534 in the Catholic Book of Worship, Let All Things Now Living, 534. Still full in forces, the stars in 